Can we hear? Are we here? I think we're live. Good afternoon, members. Let me know if everything's working. There seemed to be some slight weirdness with member live streams, with stuff not showing quite as I expect. So let me know. Hopefully, everything's working as it should be. I'm glad to be kind of back. So yeah, don't take this as everything's fine and I'm back and I'm going to be doing full-time YouTube immediately. This is just going to be like, we're trying something, see how it goes. Good to see you, everyone. So, as you can see, and probably will have heard from many people already. <laughs> oh, dear. What a load of chaos. This is the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini and the AMS Lite. Obviously, due to my situation, I didn't have this until very, very recently. I think it arrived maybe two or three days ago, at which point I was like, I started taking it out of the box, as you can see, and I started looking at it, I was like, this thing's pretty cool. So I was like, I kind of want to do it on a live stream. There's no way I'm going to be able to make a review. So like, let's just do a live stream, take a look at it, because while you can say what you like about Bamboo Labs and open source and all this kind of things that, you know, you could argue about. I think there's actually some innovation here. Obviously, this is not a review, so I, I don't know how good any of this stuff is at the moment. I've literally not even turned it on. But I've got some notes here that they sent of like just specs of the machine and stuff like that. So if you have any questions, hopefully I can answer things. Uh, but I think we're just going to mainly take a look at the printer itself and try and get it printing. And I'll look at some of the cool stuff that they say it can do. There were some pretty cool things that I was just slightly fiddling with. So, yeah, let's just get started. So I have to be a little bit careful. I'm not supposed to be lifting anything that's heavy. So I had to use some a bit of higgery-jiggery to get this on the table without actually properly lifting it. It was like, turn it over this way and half lift it and balance it on here and roll it up here and we got it up. So we got to carefully take it out of the box piece per piece. I oh, know there's a whole like unboxing process. And this is one of the things I think like again people have lots to say about Bamboo Lab but uh, I think they are being innovative, they are being extremely disruptive and they're doing things quite well I think in terms of like unboxing experience. The uh, thing that I just took out there has like a QR code with a video of how to unbox the effing machine. Like, <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen anyone do that. They're like, we want to make sure that you get this out of the box without damaging it. Here's a video. Pretty handy. Uh, see, evidently, I mean, the, the instructions do sort of assume that you're able to lift things, so. This is not the actual way to take stuff out. I have got a better idea. Let's just lift things out the box piece by piece. So. Obviously, this is not like proper unboxing experience. It doesn't come all torn and ripped. I've already opened it. So like guidelines and stuff. So these are the beds that you get with it. This is the combo pack, by the way. And there's an affiliate link down below. It's not actually for this product because obviously when I put the video up, this didn't exist as a listing. So it's just to their website. No pressure to use it or anything. Just, just so you know, it's there. As far as I know though, it's going to be on pre-order at the moment and there's only going to be a few available. Further production and stuff will happen down the line. But for now, it's just a few units. If you want to be one soon, you might already be too late. So... So, yeah, it looks like two beds included. One looks like the stand... Oh, oh it's in two different bags. Hello, hello, Lars. I'm very happy to see you all again. So you've got a smooth PEI plate. It's a 180mm build size, by the way. So it's, as you know, probably already that kind of Prusa Mini and Rat Rig V Minion size. And then the other bed surface is a textured PI. So it's this gold one. 
that looketh like so. That's your two beds. This thing, oh, if I can get it out, I think is amazing. I got this out of the pack. I was like, how has nobody else done this yet? Like, so what this is, is filament swatches. It's just a bit of printed filament of the filament that they make in all the different colors. Oh. I suppose nobody else has had that much focus on multi-material, whereas this is a low-cost multi-material printer. Oh, for pricing, I've, I've got some stuff on pricing. I mean, it's probably on the website now. A1 Mini and AMS Light Combo. So that's the printer and the multi-material unit for 450 US dollars. That is pretty reasonable, in my opinion. Look at that. Like, how has nobody else done this? Every single colour that they do, and maybe others, I don't know. It's got, it says, the material, the colour, like, this is PLA, basic, and then a number code. So, 10801. Or you have this red, which is ABS, 4200. Oh, 40200. Or you have this one. This one looks, some of these look injection moulded. In fact, they all look injection molded. I didn't realize that. Are they injection molded? I think they're injection molded with like a layer line appearance to make them look 3D printed when they're not. That one's definitely 3D printed. Because you can see the uh, like first layer marks, but some of them have like injection molding marks. So they've definitely been printed. Some have been printed, some have been injection molded. But either way, it should be a good color representation of what you want to do so when you're trying to do like your multi colored designs you've got this as a reference i think that is fantastic i don't know why oh, they will get they get a little bit caught it's not perfect but come on that's more than anyone else i've seen do in terms of filament swatches wicked idea good job uh, and then we've got some toolkit. This is one of the other things they're doing. So there might be some more about it in those materials. This is like a little kit. Uh, so they're calling these like mystery box things. I think there's four or five different designs of various things. There's like a computer mouse and this lamp uh, and then some other stuff. So various just like little projects that you can do with the printer. And I believe, uh, so I think the QR code, yes, is scan QR code with bamboo handy to print. I don't like, like to call it handy. <laughs> Not great for British terminology, but anyway. Uh, yeah, so you scan it and you can straight away print the parts that you need. And then the remaining accessories, I believe this is going to be like a USB LED lamp thingy because this is the lamp one yeah so it's just like a little led light sticky tape screws and a usb with a switch doesn't take a lot probably not very expensive but it's nice to have those like little projects you can start with the printer to get around that everyone just print a benchy to start with and then throw them in the bin this would be something you can actually make and keep again it's just this is why i was doing it on a live stream because i was like this is stuff that just nobody has done before. It doesn't take, it's, it's no, <laughs> you don't have to be a genius to put a tiny kit in the box. But it's a freaking brilliant idea, in my opinion. Uh, we've got this thing. It has a little thing. It does a, I don't know what it is. Oh, maybe it's like nozzle cleaning or ejection to position. Maybe it spurts here and pushes out of the way. I don't know what it is yet. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit weird maybe that they have the ABS part, but like, it's just all their materials I think that they currently offer. So this looks like just a bunch of parts and tools, tools and bits of kit and stuff and things. Oh, that looks like a little blade for making a little scraper, nozzle cutting things, lubricant included. Some screws. 
some actually quite nice looking tools. I wouldn't say they're exceptionally premium, but sorry, I'm very much out of practice with this, aren't I? So this is like your box of stuff, and this is your little tool. It's probably not amazing, but it looks a little bit better than the general stuff that you would normally get. Oh, look at this. Oopsie daisy. Oh, that's the, like the little nozzle brush. That's again, pretty nice. Why has nobody else done this? This is a one of those needles, but in a tube. Rather than just stuck in a piece of foam that it can stick out the other side of. Tiny little things. But nerdy people like me love those tiny little changes to little things. A lot of these things, I guess people probably won't mention in reviews, but. And then I think these are the wheels for the AMS thing. So it looks like you've got two that are going to be like geared to spin clockwise and two to geared to spin anti-clockwise, something like that. And that's just packaging. Hello. Yes, I'm well, better. Better is a strange word, isn't it? Depends whether you mean improvement or better as in recovered. I'm definitely not fully recovered. There's still a long way to go. I can't do much exercise or lift heavy things or anything like that. But I'm able to move around and do most of the stuff I need to at home. So the basics are kind of there. It's just trying to get back the life that I had before. So lots of packaging. I was quite impressed again with how this was packaged in terms of it's a lot of stuff in quite a small space. I have to sit on this weird cushion to help protect myself. Uh, so oh, we're going to need a bit more. Protects the thing, presumably. Just going to get a little drink. It does look like an exercise bike. <laughs> It kind of looks, I don't know, it looks like these are handles, aren't they? It's like you hold that side and I'll hold this side and we'll like compete against each other to do a thing. I don't know. <laughs> so there's that. And then you've got the stand for that. So there's obviously some holes here. So there's some screws probably in that box. I don't know if it has a particular orientation probably doesn't matter. It doesn't look like it matters. Maybe want the cable at the back. That looks like it will just go in there like that. Yeah, the ab roller. Yes, that's the other thing I was thinking. Oh, this is, this is another one of those mystery boxes, but I think they've decided not to do this one for production. This is, was a like a toy, they call it a toy shooter model, but it's for obvious reasons. I think when you're shipping that across the pond, any inference that it's some sort of, you know, not ideal. So I think they're changing that one. And I think it's going to be like a, that's maybe the computer mouse kit or something. I'm not sure what it's changing to or what it was, but that particular kit, I don't think is going to be part of the final production pieces. Just FYI. Yes, this is where things get a bit difficult. I have to be careful with what I'm lifting and it's difficult to be careful. So this is obviously the printer itself. An individual spool holder. There's a tiny bit of plastic, but they sent me some actual boxes of PLA. You can sort of see them there. Mm, there. 
so you're not going to worry too much about the sample. One thing I actually don't like, it's a pretty minor thing, but the power cable is directly attached. Like, it's, it's fixed right in here. There's no extra plug, so this just comes exactly as is. It'd be nice to just have a kettle, kettle lead thing. Does it matter that much? Probably not really, but it would be my preference if I'm being honest, which I am, of course. Uh, yeah. So this is when I started looking at things and I just was making observations of stuff. I was like, what are things that look different here? They're like, well, for a start, it's all like injection molded stuff. It's all covered and complete. It's all really, really stiff. There's some extra packaging part I need to take off. The design just looks polished like it's, you don't get that very often. I believe this piece of black plastic, it says on the quick start instructions, but this piece is a fixed mount to hold the arm extra stiff while it's uh, being shipped. At the moment, yeah, it feels like a super quality product to me. Everything looks like it fits well. Like it's quite dense. You'll see when I uh, show you some other features in a minute. Like there are certain things that require a particular tolerance or quality in order to achieve reliably. I mean, at the moment, obviously, I don't know how reliable it is because uh, I've not used it at all. But initial impressions are certainly promising. So, oh, you can, I mean, you can feel, well, you can't feel, but this is like, it's heavy, it's dense. I mean, there is an entire power supply and stuff in here too. I'm not sure what this is for. It might be an additional module that's available later on. Because there's definitely potential for a wire to go in here. Oh, I wonder if I can, I can't help myself. You can see there's this little panel here. It might be for maintenance or something. Ooh, is it for an accelerometer? There's just a plug that you can kind of, you can see at the top here. I mean, there's a connection here as well, but that's obviously going out somewhere and you've got this open one at the top here. Don't know what it's for. It might be for an accelerometer. Might be for something else. Instructions might say. Right, there are some instructions that I might need to follow here, actually. Uh, let's carry on getting all the obvious bits off and then we'll follow the instructions. Uh, okay, we're gonna have to cut that off. There's no, like, you'd normally expect those uh, PTFE tube fittings, but we don't seem to have those. I don't know how they're holding this tube in. Maybe there's something in this rubbery plasticky thing. And then this can move. That's a nice smooth motion. It's a bit like, I th the closest design I think is the Rat Rig V Minion because of how bulky they've got this. Like this is an absolutely huge linear rail. I don't know if I have, it looks like 15 mil. Uh, yeah, that is a 15 millimeter wide linear rail. It's <laughs> absolutely chonky. So you can compare it to the Prusa Mini as much as you like. But I think the V Minion is a closer competitor. Uh, tighten the three screws circled in green to lock the heat bed. 
Oh, there's a flame under here as well. Uh, how does one get to... Oh, from the top. You tighten them from the top. Well, that's weird. Yeah? Oh, no, 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 from the side. So it looks like, I don't know, this is very strange. So you've also got these ones here. These are your normal screws, and then there's some extra screws that look like they're locking these screws into place. says to do three. So I've done three. Purge wiper, that's what this is. It's a purge wiper. See, when's the last time you saw a purge wiper on anything? Other than a bamboo. Uh -huh. Ah, it does have a screw. And so the M3 by 12. Extruded wiring is stiff. Extruded wiring is really not stiff. Very much flexible. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're using CAN bus for everything. Same with the multi-material stuff. Uh, purge wiper screw. One screw in one plastic bag. Labeled for purge wiper. Got a bit of Loctite pre-applied. So it looks like it'll come to... Ah, oh, look at that! This is... Everyone else has had so many years to do this kind of stuff, and nobody has done it. I think this is super cool. Like it's just a tiny little design thing. So this little, little lever here moves this. Hopefully you can see that. You see that moves that? So when this comes along, it comes all the way to the end. When it goes all the way to here, it then purges. And then as it moves away again, it pushes it. Out and it drops out the side. How has it taken so long for anyone to do that? It's so cool. I love it. I don't know if it works well, but I love it anyway. Uh, install the screw for the purge wiper. Spool holder installation. So it looks like we use these screw holes around the back. Scraper, spool holder, not these for AMS stand. Purge into a channel, then use a servo to ping the plastic away. Yeah, that's that's how a lot of people have done it, which is fine. There's, there's nothing really wrong with that. But the reason I think this is cool is that it's it doesn't use anything special. It's just springs and levers. There's no servo, there's no configuration. All you have to do is move the head to the right place and you just purge. It's the simplicity of it that I love, not the fact that it's just a feature that's there. I think the design, whoever's designed that. Because it's, it's, it's these solutions that are like seem super duper simple. Like, why would you do it any other way than this? That are the ones that are brilliant, I think. I wouldn't be surprised if you see people copy this. 
so then this goes here. So if you want to do single spool, you can. Hopefully this will just also slide off. Yeah. And then we have AMS to do. I'm going to stand up for a little bit. Don't be purge bin. I'm sure there will be a purge bin very soon if there isn't already. I mean, the other thing you could do is just put a bin on the floor and sit the edge of the, edge of the printer off the side, and then it would just dump straight into a bin. But yeah, I'm sure there'll be purge buckets and stuff for that. So you got some screws here, some little self-tapping screws. They should just slip into here. Seem to have one spare screw for this, but That's fine. Whatever. Better one too many than too few. Um, I wish I had a standing up desk for this. Right. So now we have to try and get these turny wheel things onto the side here. So obviously the yellows go to yellows and greens go to greens. This ends blocked, so it must go in this way. There's like a hexagon. So these are greens are squares and yellows are hexagons. The best of guns. Oh. Ooh. I love these things. There's something because they look at these little like livery latchy thing. <laughs> Like, this is not a trivial thing to come up with. I don't know where they got the idea. But it just... Presumably that will accommodate a wide range of spools, or just their spools particularly well, I don't know. But... And these are spring-loaded as well, this rotation. So in this direction, it's just constant. In this direction, it has a spring. Don't know what the importance of that is at the moment. Presumably it keeps tension on the filament. I was going to say the opposite, actually. I think this is slimmer and sleeker than I would expect. It seems kind of big, but then you look at other systems and they have to have these like other bits of trailing accessories. Like this is everything. You've got four extruders, four spools, all in this package. I'm not sure why it had this big stand and not just be sat level or something. I suppose maybe styling. This also looks weirdly close to the ground. It feels like that's not going to work a lot of the time. But anyway, any who's. I don't know if this could fit. No, I don't think it could fit extra large spools because this is too close, but... Have I done four? No, I'm missing one. There. there we go. Ah, so there's two different length tubes. Some shorter ones and some longer ones. So the way you want they want you to have it is It does have a portal kind of design. I think just the fact that they've used this white plastic. Oh, let's show you some of the cool things on there because I want to show you those before I do this. So I was just kind of fiddling, looking at stuff. So you've got these two things here. So this, I believe, sorry, the belt, the door is, I'll be back in a second. Oh.
Well, that was weird. <laughs> Sorry for the slight break. It was an unexpected interruption. I don't know how, how much you heard of that. So, yeah, as I was saying, so I think this is, this is the standard filament lever, I think, in here, because it's really stiff. This filament cutter, so that'll cut filament. And then I think if you take the door off like this, this is quite cool. So the hot end is like removable. So you take the heat sock off, which is a little bit fiddly, but then the hot end just kind of unlatches like this and you just take it out. What? <laughs> well, I don't know how well this system is going to work in the long run. And it kind of, I feel like once it's hot and got plastic all over it, it won't be as easy as I've shown you there. Because um, obviously, depending on how you end the the print, you need to obviously make sure you've done sufficient retraction that there's no filament in here. Otherwise, you have to make it hot to get the filament out to then take it out, in which case it's going to be hot when you want to take it off. But it's just a little magnet at the back that kind of mounts in there. You push the clip over, and that locks that into place. You make sure this is around the right way and you just kind of push this back on something like this yeah i was surprised that's an actual tallest hot end that doesn't take an age to do And then you've got this bit at the top. I didn't really look into this. This is obviously the multi-material tubey thing. Anyway, so the, this is a good question. The heater, uh, as far as I can tell, it is quite difficult sometimes to get the block off evenly both sides. I'm sure there's a trick to it. Once you get that, it'll probably be easier. So it looks like so the heater will be all in this block at the back. That's why there's this big flat face here. So there's this flat. Could this go any closer? A little bit. This flat side will be the contact face to the heater, which is obviously why it's larger. So that will be this face here. And then right down at the bottom, in this part here, I'm sure this will be the thermistor. You kind of see it's a different colour to the rest of it. Looks like it's brass. No, copper. So I'm sure that'll try and, in some way, retain some sort of contact with this face here. You can kind of see actually a slightly copper mark on there, so presumably that's how that works. Again, as I mentioned, I don't know how well any of this actually works in reality. 
hopefully pretty well. I was just not expecting, I mean, that's, the process just seems quite smooth. Hopefully you'll see other reviews and stuff today. Obviously this is my first impressions because I've not had it long and not had the opportunity to use it. Hmm. Getting this sock back on is a bit weird. Looks like the nozzle's out, but it's, it's the stuff that's kind of gripping, I think, at the back that's not as easy. I think that's it. And it it even has your instructions on here how to do it, which I also really like. Don't know what this does, presumably it rotates and it's connected to the motor or whatever. So, good afternoon, Ella. Good to have you here. I know I don't do stuff specifically for members very often, but I thought today we'd make an exception. This will be public afterwards. I don't know how soon afterwards. But I thought, let's just have a nice chat with the members. Oh, the other thing, there's a camera. There's a camera down here with a little thing that you can put over it for privacy. How cool is that? $430, $460 for a printer and a multi-material system that has a camera. It's just insane. Uh, like, okay, it's probably not an amazing camera. Not the point. <laughs> Uh, yes. What's next? Oh yes, this multi-material doobly. So we've got to connect the tubes. It could be a bit, a, a bit difficult to move this once it's all connected. So it looks like there's two, well, as I observed, two different lengths of tube. Yeah, so we've got two short ones, two long ones. So... Uh, of the short ones. Yeah, I checked the pricing just now. Uh, this is the kind of promo stuff that they sent me. A1 Mini and AMS Light Combo priced at $459. The A1 Mini is $300 and the AMS Light is $249. So also you save a bit by buying the combo unit, but $300 printer, $250 AMS for $460 in total if you buy it as a combo. To me, that seems pretty reasonable. So we got one tube here. I mean, this, I'll say this unit, the AMS light, does feel kind of less, uh, I don't know. It feels polished, but it doesn't feel as like heavy duty as this. And I think that's just because the way an AMS unit is, you've got your spools and everything else is just kind of plastic. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's basically nothing in these. Or is there maybe some belts or... I don't know how these are geared or... It's, it's all quite lightweight. Once you get some spools on it, that would obviously be a bit heavier. I'm assuming it doesn't matter which hole, ooh, hello, which hole these go into. I don't know how they've got all those so close together. Three. Oh no, that's four. And that's three. A dental x ray. So we've had dental x rays, portal, and old computers as the color schemes. I think all of those make sense. Uh, and then there's this, obviously, the final PTFE tube if, if you want to do single material which I don't think we're going to plan on doing right now. I think smooth PEI is probably what we want. It has this 
Yeah, so even, so we've got some little sticky out bits here and this little doobly at the back helps you guide the bread into, into place, get it nice and square. Again, basic, kind of basic features, but it's there and it works. There's also like this nozzle scrubbing thing, which they do on the uh, X1 and this nozzle brush here and the purging thing. Like that's three key features, which most cheap printers just don't have at all. Frickin' excellent. Hopefully they work. So put the AMS light to the side, insert the tubes, insert some longer tubes, insert them into the hub. Oh, we've got this extra thing. Yes, this black cable. So this black cable attaches to these four tubes. One, two, three, four. Seems to be right. It wants 50 millimeters of space between that and that. Plug the AMS light into the connector on the right. There's actually two connectors on the right, so I wonder if you can have, can you have multiple AMS and one just feeds into this? Can you have AMS into AMS? Or is there more accessories to come? There's two ports on the side. I'm pretty sure this will be operating by CAN bus. It would be typical, given that there's four conductors, you have positive and negative for power, and then CAN high and CAN low, which means you have a separate MCU or something in here, and this communicates to that. Please leave space for this bed to move forwards and backwards. Okay, let's plug it in. Oh, that might not be plugged in. Hang on, let's plug it in somewhere else. See, this is the thing I don't like. The cable is really short. There's probably some integration benefits of having that cable as part of it, but then surely if you're going to have an international design, being able to just switch that cable is the easier option. I don't know. So hopefully, we just turn her on. There we go. Hello. This is Bamboo taking over the My First Printer market. They've taken over the Core XY market. Now they're going after Creality Enders. Yep. They're going after everyone. <laughs> they really are. Like, yeah, I mean, something will happen. Someone will stop them. Someone's just got to come up with something better. That's just business is business. And then we have discussions about open source and closed source and all this kind of stuff as well. But ultimately, a lot of people buying printers nowadays are just not that interested in open source. Which is sad, but we can't decide these things. They are the way they are. Network settings, follow the on-screen instructions. So start. Seems reasonably responsive. I know you probably can't see much of this. There's also a light in here, which you can't see. There's a light in here. There you go, you can see it shining on my finger. Pretty cool. No one complains about DJI being closed source. They just buy them because they want a drone that works. Yeah, exactly. Like people just want stuff that does what it says. Set the same region as your account, Europe. 
connect to Wi-Fi. This step enables you to send prints from phones, comma, computers. Select Wi-Fi. Okay, I'm going to try and do this privately. Oh, no. Okay, this is small. If I've got an X1 car, I'd probably fall out of passion of 3D printing as a hobby. Drop it out and sell some free Wi Fi. Well, hopefully, I've successfully hidden the password. Can you switch out the ring? Oh, do you mean this colored ring here? Ooh. Oh, hopefully, I've not shared my password there. That's annoying. <laughs> Uh, use bamboo handy. This is another step where I accidentally start sending information that I don't want shared. I think it's binding to my phone. I don't think you can scan this QR code. It's surely it's way too blurry as well. There's no way that's coming through. Now it can't use the camera. What is going on? Add new printer QR code. Here we go. I definitely do not reuse passwords. Password managers all the way. I don't actually know any of my passwords. <laughs> it seems odd. You did share it. Oh, well. I'll change it afterwards. I'm sure it's only useful for those that are within physical vicinity anyway. Well, this doesn't seem to be working particularly well. Let's skip that. Can I skip it? Do we accept the following documents? Yes, I already checked them. Uh, sure. Vibration compensation and motor noise cancellation. Five minutes and seven minutes. That's not fast, but let's see how long it takes. Measure the subtle individual ooh, of each motor and activate noise calibration algorithm. Well, this seems pretty quiet already. <laughs> Oh, I tried to connect to... I don't really know how it's working.
Oh, I have the privacy filter on. So that works quite well. It does block out the camera. It's a very wide angle lens, which I suppose is what you want. It's kind of fish eyed, but. So presumably it's going to go through a bunch of different speeds measuring these vibrations. The AMS light supports spools with a width of 40 to 68 millimeters and an inner diameter of 53 to 58 millimeters. So not very big for the inner diameter, but presumably that should cover still a decent range of spools. Avoid using AMS light to print flexible materials, including TPU, TPE or PVA. Avoid using materials that are too hard, too high modulus or too brittle, not enough toughness including third-party fibre reinforced materials, PACF, GF, PETCF or GF, and PLACF or GF. Please use external spool placement to print these filaments. Note, press the release button to disengage the driver motor if filament is stuck. Push the spool all the way onto the retractor, feed the filament into the filament inlet, connect the tool head filament inlet, and the filament guide with the PTV tube Hang filament spool on spool holder, then feed the filament line into the PTFE tube. Oh, that's for single spool. And then first print. And again, it has these industrial features which we kind of hated before. I remember when people started like having scannable codes and stuff on your um, spools, and then it would identify the material and stuff automatically, and everyone's like, oh, we don't want this, we don't want this. Uh, I think most of the argument was requiring that so they would scan the material and then say oh if it's not our material then we won't print with it which is fair enough we want an open material system so we can use any materials we fancy and now we've got systems i think prusa actually has a code in theirs as well to be able to scan the spool but bamboo uses it on the ams obviously and it just already knows what material is there you just whack it on it scans the thing and it's like it's this material it's this color I'm pretty sure Prusa have a RFID on the inside of their spool as well. It's something that they never announced because the news, a lot of people don't like it. I think you'll only see it when you get to the end of the spool. <laughs> I think I can't remember I think they put it like on the inside at the end of the material I'm not sure how I feel about the there's not much like strain relief for this cable it's a pretty flexible cable but hopefully I'll be alright Do we try and print a lamp or do we try and print a benchy? Lamp's kind of a bit big. Maybe it won't be that big. I don't know. Well, it can't be that big, I suppose. But it could take a number of hours. One thing I don't like about the software, which I've noticed with X1, is that it's, it doesn't seem very, e very easy to add other materials. Like, if I want to add Prusherman ASA, I've just added it as generic ASA because I, don't, I can't say, oh, this is Prusherman. The RFID on the Prusa spools isn't used for anything other than for tracking the spool on their site. That's the QR code. The Y-axis is a different type of rail, but yeah, it is massive. 
the QR tells you the data on that exact spool for the like the measuring the measuring of the diameter and stuff. So the RFID apparently. Oh, okay. But I suppose I mean hmm. if it's connecting to the site, that's maybe the only use. Maybe that's the only one they have open, like openly shared. But I'm sure you could use that exact same feature because if it's connecting to the site, I'm sure that page or database has all the information to know the color and the size and all this malarkey. Yeah, it has an RFID tag. Yeah, but they, they just never really announced it because I guess they hadn't really implemented it. So these are all like custom made, I shouldn't have touched it, all custom extrusions, all custom injecting, injection molded parts. This looks like all one part down here. This whole base, I think. I don't think there's a join there. The screen is a little bit small. Typing, tapping on it with, I mean, I've got pretty skinny fingers. So if you've got large fingers, you're going to find this pretty difficult. Do they have a Peter Pointer in the box? That could be a nice addition. Because if my skinny fingers find it difficult, I'm sure many people are going to find it tougher than me. For inventory tracking. Makes sense. I mean, you can use it for anything. It's just a unique code for that spool, but it will have all the information for that spool on it. Vibration up to 200 hertz. I'm going to have to stand up for a bit. Some particular things that are still healing get sore when I sit down for too long. Which is why I would like a standing desk for doing these at the moment, but I don't have one, so we just have to stand up momentarily. Hello, I think you missed this at the beginning. How cool is this? It's just a colour swatch of all their different materials. They're not all printed, some of them are injection moulded. But it's just... It's so cool. I don't know why nobody else has done these. It's all well saying, oh, you could just do them yourself kind of thing. But like, if I wanted a swatch of every different filament, I'd have to buy a kilo or something of all those filaments. I suppose a lot of people do samples, but it's just a lot of effort just to do, isn't it? To have someone do it all for you. Blooming fantastic. Oh, I want to line them up. Calibration completed. You're all set. Right. So. I don't know if there's any multi-material prints that we have available. We might have to deal with that another time. Unfortunately. A new firmware update is available. Uh, sure, I don't think they take very long. Change my mind. Right, let's see how this AMS doobly-doo works. Let's cut these things open.
What's louder, this doing its input shaping or the CPAP on the VZ block? Oh, CPAP is about 10 times louder. Even that doing input shaping was not very loud at all. So, I believe what we do, let's make sure you can see what I'm doing. So, first we'll cut this tape a bit off the end because we don't want sticky stuff going into our extruder or hot end. And then we take this, shove it on here. That goes on there. Maybe try and straighten this a touch, perhaps. And then it just goes in here. And it's going through the tube, the tube of truth. Oh, well, that's not good. Oh, nope, that's not good. Uh. Don't do that. Do not move while in use. That just kind of exploded off. Okay, so it's not terribly stable, maybe. Does the color match the one in the swatch? We're gonna try and do a color test. PLA basic. I'd say that's a pretty good match. I'd say yes. You probably can't tell maybe that much on stream. It's gonna change with direction and stuff as well. And of course this is prior to printing, so we'll check again maybe after printing. This has not gone all the way through. Uh -huh. Filament, AMS. Hmm. I may have balls it up there by uh let's have another go. Oh, missed. Okay. I presume it'll get to a filament sensor here and do a detection thing. It's just gone to here. Oh, there we go. It's worked it out. So maybe it just spins it until it detects uh, what the material is. Because presumably the code in here has to line up with where the sensor is on the inside. Something like that. It's got a nice orange here. Just realised this is going on the outside. So, the light keeps getting in the way. This is a very bright orange. So, I'm pretty sure it doesn't really matter what number slot you use. Obviously, for your own sanity, you might want to go in numerical order, but. That motor sounds like it's struggling a bit, but. Do these spool holders auto rewind themselves? Yeah, well, I looked at that earlier. It does seem, it has a, a springiness. So if presumably it can pull back in that direction, feeds in, it must do. I don't know, we'll have to work it out maybe in a minute. I'm pretty sure there is, because I'm sure they've worked it out from doing the AMS that 
that is a useful thing to have. We'll load up a few filaments, but I'm not sure we'll be using much. So this one going on to here, that kind of clicks in, which is nice. And then we stick it in there, grab this, and that does the feedy. And that will spinny spin until this shows up. PLA, ta-da! So down here, you can see this one says nothing. This one says green, orange, and white, and they all say PLA, apart from obviously the one that's got nothing. Uh, assistant, no assistant messages. Settings, device name. Oh, have I just added somebody's printer that's not this? No, the camera is working. Oh, it is that one. Phew! I thought somebody else had got a new bamboo at the same time. Uh, got an SD card, so it comes with a, looks like 32 gigabyte SD card, which is nice. Print options, sounds, step loss recovery, AMS filament backup, and filament tangle. Filament backup is so good. So for those who have not used the AMS before, they've recently added auto backup. I don't think it was a feature originally where if you've got two spools of the same material and color in your AMS, if one runs out, it'll just use the other one, which seems like the most obvious thing, but it's so good because it means you, a lot of the time I will like not use the end of a spool because I don't know exactly how much is left. I don't want to risk losing like all the time of doing a print because I run out of filament. But when it's got the AMS attached, you just go to the end, it switches over to the other one and carries on. It's so good. So yeah, really nice that we can uh, do that with this now. Two, LAN only mode, screen off time, terms of use, factory reset, da 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 Print files. Oh, so there's a multicolor benchy, a bed scraper, a bag clip, squishy turtle, speedboat race benchy, pan whistle, screw gauge, swatch display board, Panda by Flexi Factory. So there's a bunch of pre sliced stuff on here, which is quite nice. Presumably they've got licenses appropriate to uh, to make all these things. So this looks like three color is very basic. It's not like integrated multicolors. It's just switching at certain layers. We can turn on time lapse as well. Bed leveling, dynamic flow calibration. So here we go. Uh, yes, technically it would. Uh, the, as soon as you change the mass of the, the moving mass, it will affect that. Uh, I kind of want to get this nice and close. Uh, you want to see AMS doing stuff as well, though, don't you? Maybe something like this for now. Let's see how we go. So this is 23 minutes, apparently. So saying these are the three different colors we want to use. What do you want me to use from the selection? So we want to use that for that, that for that, and that for that. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So you can just switch to whatever color you feel like using for each of the different sections. Yes, that's cool. Love it. So we're going to have orange, white, and green, which is the three colors we've got. Preparing. It has a play button as if I need to press it. It's got some dancing music. <laughs> I'm not sure it really needed the, the musical sounds. You can turn them off as we just saw though. So it looks like 
red flashing light means time lapse has started and we've got temperatures on the screen over here may i maybe i should have moved this all a bit closer so you can see it a bit better This is a bit, is it more sturdy? I think it's, hmm. That's filament being loaded. I've got to be a bit careful where I'm sitting because I don't want a nose full of printing fumes. See, this is doing exactly as I said. It's pushed all the way over so the tray arm comes to here and it will purge I think and this does spin with the extruder oh. again this is not a review I'm trying not to provide too much in the way of opinions but this is pretty cool I'm sorry it just is hopefully the reliability and stuff of all these features is good my experience of the X1 Carbon indicates that it should be, but again, a different printer has, there's absolutely no guarantee. Where's that? It's pooped. It's pooped down here. That went quite a long way. That was quite a shoot of poop. Or a poop shoot is one I say. <laughs> Instant purchase because it plays Nokia tunes. XY mechanical mode sweep. So it feels like it's doing resonance compensation again. Just a quick version by the looks of it. Which is not ridiculous. It's uh that's a nozzle scrub feature. And another nozzle scrub feature. I'm not sure quite what that tray at the back does because they use a part of the bed on the X1. It's to do with the nozzle and maybe preventing purging or brushing, wiping the nozzle tip. And so is this. Like they kind of do the same thing in a slightly different way. Oh, it's pretty damn cool. Heated bed preheating. So the nozzle's sitting at 136 and the bed's at 58. Presumably we're just going to go to 60-ish for the bed. Is it sensors on at the inside of the ends of the arms? Uh, I reckon there are no sensors. It's sensorless homing. So it looks like the nozzle is touching the bed for the probing sequence. So it looks like they're using a, a some kind of force gauge. I've forgotten the word. Load cell, that's the one. Not done anything technical in like six weeks, so I've lost all my vocab. I'm sure it'll come back. It is nice and quiet. Strain gauge, yeah. Well, strain gauge is like the device that makes a load cell work in my mind well yeah i mean you're right it is it is a strain gauge because it's probably not a load cell is it it's just detecting the strain in the material 
the deformation of the material. Bed leveling process. So like the X1, it looks like it's got quite a bit of a, there you go, purging filament again, so if I can catch it. It's got quite a bit of a setup process before it actually starts to print, which I'm sure some people will complain about. But if you have to do all of this to make it work really well, every single, this is quite a big purge. Why is it purging so much? Calibrating extrusion flow. It's doing a big poop. Yeah, if you have to do this much to get a good print every single time, then so be it. I'd much rather wait an extra 10 minutes for the print to start. Whoop, there it goes. I'd much rather wait 10 minutes for the print to start than have a print go for two hours and then realize that it's actually no good. Is this the print or is this calibration? Oh my goodness, this is the print, okay. For some reason it's right at the back of the bed. And we also have a purge blocks thing. Didn't think we'd need a purge block for this, but apparently we do. It's a pretty speedy boy. It's an odd location. I don't know why it's done it right at the back of the bed. It's, I guess it's a preferred location for some reason. Pretty quick. Noise level is very good. When it does the very fast moves, you can hear it has that little high pitch whine that you get. I don't mean like motor whine, as in. Well, it's a nice, it's kind of a pleasant sound. I was going to go screeching, but it's not screeching. It's just a. <laughs> What is controlling the bed? I don't I'm presuming it's a belt. It's got to be belt from it. It's all hidden in the uh, compartment below. Which is pretty fancy. It looks like it's, there's nothing. It's just going back and forwards with like electromagnets or something. It looks like there's an arm that goes down from the bed on this side into the area below it, which is presumably like a, a plate, which, so like, uh, on this side of the bed, uh, how do I do it on the screen? This side of the bed, somewhere here, there's like a plate that goes down into the lower basement, and that presumably has a belt attached to it, which is, does the 4D backwardy thing. Interesting infill, the slight rectilinear diagonals. Hopefully we get some decent quality out of this printer. When I'm printing PLA, I, it's quite often because I want to print something that looks nice rather than is particularly uh, durable. A lot of times if I'm printing GIFs for family members or whatever, I'll print those out of PLA because they just need to look really good and because they're typically like statues or artwork kind of stuff that you just want to look cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, it'll keep dust out. It also probably helps reduce finger interest. <laughs> I mean, there are warning signs on it for keep hands clear. They could probably be a little bit more obvious. I mean, they're definitely there. Um, I mean, I don't think anyone's going to uh, start thinking that this is for children. But I think quite often general public will see something that's like a smaller version or like a light version, they'll go, oh, well, that's a great one that my child can start on. And this is still, I mean, in my mind, this is a pretty serious tool. Oh, here we go. We're filament switching. So it's just done a cut, I think. I think it per cut that, didn't it? Yeah. So. 
Oh, the white's already coming. So, of course, the green doesn't have to go all the way back. It only has to come up to here. I keep wanting to catch it as if it's going to make a difference. Belt on the white, yeah. Well, obviously it's belt on the, uh, yes, belt on Y and X. Where is the Z? Oops. Oh, uh, Z, it'll be inside. Oh. Yeah, you can see the lead screw in there. See, this is the kind of tidy shit that you get. I'm so... Oh, it's just fired poo at me. Thanks for that. What did I ever do to deserve having poo launched at me? Well, I don't really want to turn this into a kind of promotional thing. I do want to check what other cool shit they say it can do. Full calibration, fully assembled right out of the box. Uh, I mean, the printer, I suppose, was fully assembled, mostly. Spool holder wasn't, but I guess that's close enough. Easy to use. Well, I'm inclined to agree with that at the moment. Multicolor printing. I mean, it's just done a purge. It'll definitely need a bucket. It's weird how they've not integrated a poop bucket. Is it weird? I mean, it feels like they kind of have thought of everything and then just gone, oh, we don't need a poo bucket. Maybe the assumption is you just let it go. Like, just goes wherever. I don't know. Subtle colour scheme and an elegant, clean CMF design. I don't know what a CMF design is, but apparently it's got one of those. Divine design to be a timeless appliance. This is exactly what they said in the 70s with the same plastic one. And after five years, it looks yellow and broken. I mean, I'm sure they've not used the same plastic, but you know what I mean. There's no such thing really as timeless design. Especially when it comes to technology. Reliable, sure. Fast printing, I'm inclined to agree with that. Easy to maintain, that's going to take a lot of testing. A random mystery box is included in each package of the A1 Mini Combo retail version. So you need to get the retail version of the combo, which is both units together, if you want to get one of these mystery boxes. Color swatch. A collection of bamboo filament colors is included in the package, showcasing the available colors in PLA, ABS, and PETG. So other more advanced filaments, they're CF and... Uh, nylon carbon fiber filaments not included in that, but uh, build volume 180 cube, hot end all metal. Nozzle is a stainless steel nozzle. Interesting. Hot end 300 Celsius. Nozzle diameter 0.4. You can also get 0 0.2, 0 0.6, and 0.8, and profiles are available for all of those. Build plate temperature only goes up to 80. Have they listed material compatibility? Not particularly. Hot end max flow, 28 with ABS, with 150 by 150 millimeter single wall print using bamboo ABS. So this is good. They've, when they've listed their maximum hot, hot end flow rate, they've not just gone, oh, it's a thousand like some other people do, they've they've said the volumetric flow rate they didn't do, the material which they use, the type of material, the brand of material, the temperature they did it at, and the size and type of print that they used. That is brilliant, because that means you can kind of just replicate it using those same things. And if you don't get something at least close, you can go, well, this is not right. Supportive filaments, PLA, PETG, TPU, and PVA. ABS, ASA, PCPA, PET, Carbon fiber or glass fiber reinforced polymers are not recommended. Which is pretty reasonable. I, you could probably try those things and maybe if they had, I don't know. Yeah, you'd probably struggle with them because the bed only goes to 80. But again, PLA, PETD, TPU and PVA. I mean, PLA and PETG are probably going to be the two that you use most. Oh, we're doing another material change. So yeah, it chops it, purges it. 
retracts it, pulls a new one, purges, next. This is banging. I've not had a PLA printer for a while now. Well, something I would consider a PLA PETG, mostly because I've been doing all the Vorons and X1 Carbon and stuff and the Creality box, which is not in a best state at the moment. And the, all the Vorons and things, it's all been like, everything's ABS. So when I want to print PLA, I'm like, oh, not ideal. Like they can, but they're just not as good at PLA. They're better at doing the hot materials. They're good hot boxes. Whereas this, I think, is going to be my PLA and gift printing machine. <laughs> Which is good, because my dad's birthday is coming up and I need to make something. Oh, the V-Minion I do have. It's over there. I've just not used it in ages. Trouble is, with the limited space I have... I mean, I do have quite a lot of space, but it's... There's so many printers. As, as a printer starts to get a little bit older and a little bit less relevant, maybe. I mean, the V Minion is still an absolutely great printer, but unless I'm like actively trying to make content on it, it ends up going to like a less priority spot. And then it's like, oh, I don't need this today, so I'm going to have to move it here because I need this space to do this. And then it just inevitably ends up on a shelf because I've got other printers which can do a similar thing. For example, the VZ bot, which I print just before I went into hospital, I've obviously not touched since. It's done that one benchy, and I've not had an opportunity to touch it yet. It's on a really wobbly table at the moment next to me, and because I can't lift anything, I can't move it to anywhere better. Have I accidentally done a country's colour flag? I hope not. That was not an intention. If this is a country's national colours in a flag, please don't <laughs> think that it's any sort of endorsement. This is just the thing as the way it is. I just happened to pick these things. I didn't even pick the colours, they just sent me Island of Argentina. I was thinking Argentina for some reason. Green, white, orange is. Well, that's... Argentina's... What am I thinking? That's blue and white. Islands, vertical stripes. This is horizontal, so it's close, I suppose. Steve has been using your videos as a guide for his... V has he really? That's awesome. How are we doing for time? It says five minutes left. And then we're going to have to finish. I can't sit around for as long at the moment, I'm afraid. And standing up is not very convenient when the table's very low. I've just got so many things I'm working on and I've got to try and relax and recover. <laughs> I want to work on VZBot. I want to work on design some improvements. I have a massive project for a printer 
later in the year, which I've spent a lot of time on. I'm designing upgrades for various things. I've got printers to review. There's just so many things. But I must focus. I must relax. Enforced relaxing is not something I'm very good at. I have to, <laughs> have to try very hard if I'm going to do nothing. I'll see if I can show you the camera angle, kind of, a bit. It might work. Probably not very optimal. Should be three minutes left. Streaming the video while printing tends to not be super great. It's pretty low frame rate. I hope maybe you can see this. But it's a pretty clear image. I mean, if you were just trying to monitor to see if it had failed or got stringy all over the place or fallen off the bed, you'd definitely be able to do that with that camera, I think. We're up to the roof. Thanks, Ella. Thanks for popping by. Hope your uh, journey to get more cable ties is successful. I wonder if the reason they tilted the AMS light is so that you can kind of more easily see the colors. Because if it was lying flat, maybe from a distance, you wouldn't see the ones at the back. I'm not really sure. I'm trying to work out why it's all tilted like that. It just seems a bit of an odd design decision. Apparently one minute to go. This seems like a long minute. It's good that it doesn't continue the purge tower as well. It doesn't go to the top. It just goes to the last color change, does as much purge as it needs, and then carries on. I think this might be my first ever... No. It's not my first multi-material print. No. Nope. That was a few months ago on the Bamboo Carbon X1. What's it? It is really quiet. the The noise is mostly from the the the, uh, the bed. Uh, chop the filament. Purge the filament. Retract the filament. The 
that's not gone perfectly well. There's a bit of schmoo on the nozzle now. This is going to go what, all the way to the top. <laughs> the music is amazing. Well, it's pretty well stuck. It's pretty hot. It's very well stuck. It's extremely well stuck. Um, well, blow me over. That's a bloody brilliant print. Give me a second and I shall show you a little bit closer up. It immediately offers you reporting flaws, reprint, or just okay. Okay, move on with my life. Thank you. Uh -huh. yeah. Normally we do this, and then we put this here, and then it focuses, and we can see how good it is. I don't like to use the word perfect, but that is a very good benchy, which is also multi-material and there's no like weird overlap of material colors. That is just a darn good print. Again, of course, only first impressions here today. First layer looks good. You can see the text nicely, bit smooth around. You can almost see the text at the back, which you really get. You can see the infill a little bit around the sides. I can't remember how many perimeters it was doing. I think there might be some perimeter interaction with the outer walls. The seam is maybe not ideal here in the corner. It looks like it's a bit aggressive but you know 25 minutes for three color entry with basically no interaction well i'm impressed i don't know if i'll be doing a full review just because of you know energy and recovery and all this kind of stuff at the same time. I can't sit around for any more today, I'm afraid. Uh, this was a test of my capabilities as much as that of the printer. And I am at my limit at the moment. So I need to go and rest and do something else for a bit. But hopefully it's been good. We've had a nice good look at the brand new Bamboo A1 Mini and the AMS Lite. What a cool little machine. Hopefully, well, I'd encourage you now to go check on reviews for those people that have, uh, from those people that have had them for a little while. Obviously avoid the one that came out early and don't watch that because that screwed over everyone else. But go and support those creators who have spent loads of time testing and making a full review. It was great to be able to do a live stream again. And yes, hopefully I'll be able to do another one soon. Uh, there, there probably will be more live streams and edited stuff for the same reasons. I just want to get back into it, cover a few different things without spending an entire week doing a single review and nothing else. So hopefully extra variety in live stream stuff as we take a look at other things. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Good to chat to all you members, and I shall see you soon-ish. Goodbye. <laughs> you are the weakest link. Goodbye.